You know, I believe if I can get through a stutter, I can help people find their voice, share their story, uh, to connect ultimately with their prospect or their or their customer by being themselves. The way marketing is going to happen in the next couple of years is going to be mind-blowing. Now that everyone is getting into the tech ba bandwagon using AI and ML and these videos being generated and all this CGI that you can see everyone using, all these cosmetic companies using, MarkTech is going to be very, very, very big space. Companies coming on board from the international market, let it be US, India, Australia, UK, anywhere, uh, and, and really try and serve those small businesses and serve them what's happening out in the world and serve them the real digital experience that they could actually be giving to their users. Got an interesting guest today. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. I'm a bit shy. So no, not shy. Well, you know, thank you for the bottle of beer. I feel like this is an ad for Heineken and, okay, we'll and, not, cle we'll, and clear water. Now, now that we've said it, we, we can't even blur it because we've just advertised it. <laughs> Great to be on the show. Thank you very much. All the way from New Zealand. Nice. So what have you ever been, been to New Zealand? I have. He hasn't. But I have. I have. I have. You, you'll be going soon. I am in Mumbai, and I'm very excited to be. I've been here for three weeks, and my my trip was largely to help a client uh, with some presentation and uh, marketing uh, to Indian schools to to have them come and study in uh, in New Zealand. Um, but the rest of the time, I've been networking my ass off, and and I met you two beautiful gentlemen. And look at this is our second meeting. We've had, we've had. We've downgraded from the the craft beers to the Heineken, and here, but we've gone to a podcast. So I'm really excited to be here. So we've upgraded on something from a conversation oh, to a podcast. Oh well, clearly the the first meeting was perfect because look at us now. Absolutely, the only way is up. And and then we've got another meeting coming up with the good craft beers before you fly out. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, so I mean, you tell us that you started your career as a broadcaster. So what what was all that about? How was it? Where were you doing it? And and just tell us a bit about. Well, it. I'll probably start with my a little bit of my story. So sure. when I was a youngster growing up on Auckland's North Shore in New Zealand, I was surrounded by really interesting people who had really good stories to tell, and they were broadcasters, radio announcers, voice artists, actors, musicians, entertainers, show people who just loved life and wanted to have fun. And as a six-year-old, that just sounded really cool. So it was then I decided that I would follow the footsteps of my father and my grandfather into show business and radio broadcasting. But about the age of nine, I developed a stutter, you know, that complete yeah. loss of power when you open your mouth to speak. And I remember lining up at my Catholic all-boys school on Auckland's North Shore, you know, like we'd, we'd call it a tuck shop back in there, it was a canteen, you know, I'm sure you call it whatever you will. And I would line up, practice what I was going to say, and I'd, I'd get up there and go, could, 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 could I have a m -m -m meat pie? And yeah, it was pretty demoralizing. I remember my, my, my mother saying to me, maybe this broadcasting thing isn't for you. But I was kind of driven. So I then, over the next seven years, I did a lot of work in voice. I did some work in speech and drama, learning how to speak, how to, how to slow down, how to uh, use my voice. Uh, and then I did a lot of stage work, a lot of acting work to build my confidence in front of people. And then age 19, I didn't have a stutter, and, or 21, and I went on to work in broadcasting for 10 years. Some of the stations, which are, I haven't listened to any radio while I've been here in Mumbai, but uh, they were talk stations, music stations, you know, the top ranking music stations at the time in the 90s. And for me, that kind of frames my why around why I do what I do, which is really this principle of imperfect action. You know, I believe if I can get through a stutter, I can help people find their voice, share their story, uh, to connect ultimately with their prospect or their, or their customer by being themselves. Absolutely, absolutely. And then, and then from the whole broadcasting, amazing story, by the way. Uh, really, really good. Um, starting at year nine with with the stutter and and totally getting 
uh, fixing it, I think, I think not a lot of people. And look, you know, it's fi- fixing it or accepting it. Right. You know, true. I still stutter when I'm nervous. Okay. But I don't let it bother me. And it's just about knowing how to let it come to the surface, acknowledge it, and then let it, and then, and then release it. Right. So I still, I've stuttered a little bit in the last five minutes of talking to you. But I just, I just like, okay, how do I either drink beer, release the concern or worry you have about being, you know, on a podcast, but it is just about slowing it down and just forgetting about it. Just we're having a conversation with two people. Just take it easy. Just take it, take it easy. Car pie, bro. No, isn't that right? It's uh, what's the Maori term for she'll be right? Is that car, car pie? I, I wouldn't know. I, I, I've heard that word, so I'm sure it is, uh, because that's that's quite a common word I've heard. Yeah, I think it's, I, I think it's car pie. So yeah. that's limited to Kiara and, and Morena. So, so what, what did you say? Kiara. Ka, what, can you say it one more time? Kiara. Kia Kiara. So Kia in New Zealand is hello. Uh, in, yeah. in, 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 the, in the Maori language, uh, Kia Ora, K-I-A-O-R-A, and uh, I tend to run it together. Kia ora, roll your eyes. The Indians are good at rolling their eyes. They are. And, yeah, and I think New Zealand, it's, you know, I understand you spent a bit of time there. I think it's important, uh, the, 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 the blending of white and Māori and Pacific Island, uh, it's important. And it it's, it's been, you know, since probably the early 2000s, the rise of maori and Māori language I think New Zealanders, we come away and, you know, we live in New Zealand and, and then we go away and then we realize that overseas people are like saying Kyoto or they talk about the, the black caps or they talk about, you know, uh, the, 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 the all blacks. All blacks, absolutely. And they, they, they have a go at this Maori thing and we walk away going, you should feel quite proud. You know, I'm a, I'm a white boy from Takapuna. Yeah. But I feel very proud. And certainly as a broadcaster, we learned how to say Māori names. And I'm so grateful for that because there is respect, right? It's the same thing. I've been very bad in my Hindi pronunciation because I want to be respected, right? right? So one of the things about the Māori language and, you know, I've left New Zealand, I've come to Mumbai and we're here, maybe to a lesser extent in India, but we go away and people... You know that even 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 the word bro, right? Yeah, it's it's such it's such an iconic word in New Zealand, bro, cuz, and this this lovely we hear people overseas talking about it with Sweden, European Americans, and it's it just makes you really proud, you know? It does it does? It just makes you really proud. Absolutely, so, that's amazing, bro. Thanks, bro, bro. <laughs> you got it, cuz. So, <laughs> uh, so John, uh, I mean, first of all, thank you for being in the podcast i did not get the chance to thank you and uh, second uh you have been in mumbai since now a couple of weeks first of all how did you feel and what did you find interesting as well as what different you know uh mind-blowing difference did you find in mumbai versus you know new zealand driving 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 <laughs> undoubtedly how people drive in new zealand that we we have rules and we have policemen who stop you if you cut people off or what have you you know it's it's an american societal right it's a uk usa it's it's the, the, there's rules but the funny thing is the rules work that's the point that's that's the point is everybody they don't there's no road rage people they you know, they might just beep and then someone cuts them off completely or a pedestrian walks in front of you. So Mumbai is nothing like New Zealand. Nothing like. And isn't that takes you out of your comfort zone? It's perfect. Why go to another place that's much like where you left? Absolutely. So, you know, for me, yeah, I've 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 had some uh just I'm a I'm a people watcher. Right. I'm not a pe- if a particularly good tourist, I like to just watch people and see how they are either, you know, to going about their daily routines and just me, my loose interactions with them. So certainly the, the driving experience, a little bit around the food, 
cultural and and just seeing how things work has been my, my biggest eye open. That's and amazing. and then from a, a business side, how people are so welcoming. <laughs> how people are so welcoming is, you know, I've met these gentlemen, this is the second time, and here we are on a podcast, uh, and they're just cool people, right? It's almost like visitors are treated like gods. They are. I, I don't know who told me that, but it was, <laughs> it was uh, uh, truly humbling, grateful to be welcomed. But I have been networking through uh, the the SME BNI network, and I get call for calls from area managers going, "I know you can't come to our chapter, but I'm going to have." three of our leadership team meet you on a particular date to see how we can help you grow your business. Now, that's, that's just n not possible. Australia don't do that. New Zealand certainly doesn't do that. Maybe America does. But it's just, it's, it's this hard to describe. It's a combination of respect, a desire to grow one's business, um, and this cultural element of togetherness, or almost like this sixth sense, if you know what I mean. Right. I, I feel you have the sixth sense of this one soul that's kind of connected. Okay. It's a little woo woo, but So 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 do you think it's it's like uh countries like New Zealand and Australia, their people are, are, are a little close. They don't they're not so open to just a cup of coffee with somebody who they don't know, as compared to something like USA. You go to America and then uh people just meet random people every day. Do you think India is similar to that in terms of business? Would be, are people just open to... Well, what I like about uh, New Zealand, well, from, from an India perspective in America and probably Australia is people will treat you at face value, right? right. It's not about who you know, it's about what value you can bring. Uh, when, you apply, when I lived in Sydney and you, know, you were working for a marketing agency, whatever, they judge your, whether you can do the job based on the skills and the experience you've had. But in New Zealand, it's, I wonder if you know my friend, <laughs> right? It's like you've kind of got to know some people yeah. to get the doors open to get in there, right? Okay. Because it's New Zealand, you know, we talk about two degrees of separation. So, you know, I, I don't know this man, Ritesh, but I'll know you who can introduce me to Ritesh. That's how small our village is, yeah. you know? And while that's good from a community perspective of kind of this one community, you know, when Jacinda Ardern used to front the New Zealand media during COVID and she said, you know, we're the, we're the team of five million. Yeah. This, this news, this country of five million, let's, let's pull together and work together like a big family. Now, that's just not possible really in Australia or, or certainly not India, certainly not America. Let's not get into America. <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's um yes to to answer your question it's the the the, the ways or the, the insights I'm having is people are more willing just to have a conversation yeah I don't know whether it's because I'm so good looking and I'm from New Zealand but I'm sure it's that possibly that <laughs> possibly that cool um so you you also mentioned working for marketing agencies and you look uh, across marketing agencies in New Zealand and Australia. So how was that? Like, what was that all about? What were you doing? Again? So yeah, you, to answer your question around marketing agencies, I started working in a uh, Clemenger, now Clemenger owned agency. And then I went to work with O Media, which is an outdoor media supplier, and then onto YNR. And really it, the area that I was focused on in the early 2000s was experiential marketing or brand experience, giving okay. giving consumers an experience with the brand. Heineken. So Heineken sponsors the tennis. So they have a uh, budget to uh, give people an experience around so they create a Heineken bar at the tennis, a bespoke experience and you know umbrellas and it's all branded and they run special promos to get special VIPs. They have a VIP area. Come and experience the brand and leave going, I love Heineken even more uh, after the tennis. So it was that kind of leveraging sponsorship and creating activations. I did some work for McDonald's, for Nestle, for uh, um, Banks, um, uh, L'Oreal, even with my hairstyle, and you know, cars and and tech brands. I've worked with Samsung, LG, uh, um, the Huawei, and 
Yeah, and it's it's been a often it's it's loosely activation. So activation in certain locations, and you know, really it was coming from a theatre background or a, even from a from a radio background. It was all around. Um, well, I used to say that being an actor, you did it. You you did acting for the craft, right? It was about about the love or the joy of being treading the boards. When you work for marketing agencies doing doing brand experience, you got paid for it. No. And that was kind of like, yeah, I quite like this. And I did that for 15 years. I loved it. I loved being a, a producer, uh, a, you know, managing the the different channels of how you would take an experience and then you would use the digital channels to invite or amplify PR. Uh, and then if you're doing a large, large campaign, uh, you'd have all of the outdoor, all the media over the, you know, four weeks, all about your show, your, your, your event. It was, it was great. Amazing. And now, now you're running your own business. I know. How is that? You're, you're a presentation coach and you're helping, you're helping leaders and experts. Communicate their value. Communicate their value. Because I think, and this is, for me, it's a, it's a blend between my work in broadcasting or theatre and taking some of the knowledge we've, we've learned in marketing and those marketing agencies to help people find their voice. You know, it's like, I mean, a lot of people don't do a podcast because it's, people just can't fathom. I was like, I've got a microphone in front of me. I can't, I can't do this. Or I can't speak on a stage to talk to a group of people because, well, you know, everything has told me in my past that I can't do this. And to it, you know, I'm finding there's a lot of SMEs in, in the space that I'm playing in have real challenges in that. Some people want it more, some people don't, right? It's if you want to win business, you do videos on LinkedIn, you guest on podcasts or have your own podcast, and you go out and promote yourself. But for a lot of SMEs that I work with, they have just simple difficulties of communicating what they do. I mean, I know you, you guys are within the, within the BNI network, and we know that we have to get up and speak, and most people yeah. will read a pitch. They'll read what they need to say for the fear of getting it wrong. Or, and then they'll read it so fast that the audience won't even hear what they have to say. So, you know, it's, it's a great place to, for me, really moving the needle and, and it really making a difference, and that was the difference in that corporate space, you know, that, there's these big budgets and we've got a Heineken budget and it's going to be a million bucks and we get to, we get to take $500,000 of that for our agency fees, pay all that stuff. But you don't really make a difference. Yeah. You know, there's no... And that's what I love about working with smaller, smaller businesses is you really get to make a difference in their marketing effort or uh, having them get past a limiting belief that like video or or speaking yeah makes sense so what was the what was the point where you decided to become an art of communication coach what was the tipping point in your life when you thought yeah i'm gonna do this well funny enough my first business i had a creative director who worked for ddb a, a, a large um creative agency and and he said john you were already organized and, you know, would you like to go into business together? And I went, sure. I happened to be in Selma in the United States of America, which is an amazing, iconic place where Martin Luther King, they'd walked over a bridge and there was bloodshed, what have you. But it was, the, it was kind of the, the, a, a key moment in the, in the civil rights days. And I was there and I was just so emotionally connected with, these, with, 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 with Selma. And this guy said, you start a business? I went, yeah, sure. I was 49 years of age. You know, I think about the, who was it? One of the Ogilvies, is it David, David Ogilvy? He didn't start his advertising agency until he was something like 45. Yeah. So don't let age stop you. I, I'm a fast learner. But it was, it was, you know, I tried a few things. You know, that association with the creative agency didn't work. I tried some digital marketing for accountants. Bad move. <laughs> accountants don't want to spend any money. And I tried lots of stuff. And I, I, then I just came back to, well, what am I good at? 
what do I like doing? And I like talking to people. This is great. Right. And then by talking to them, you understand, you know, what are, what are your challenges? What would you like? What's the goal? What's the dream? What would you like to do? Where, what's going to really make a difference in your world? And for, for me, the conversations tend to be, you know, they've got a website, they've got some social content, but they, they want to go to that next level. And that's where I come in. Nice. Let's talk about uh, the New Zealand market a bit. Uh, what is going on in New Zealand market as far as tech is concerned? Also, what is going on in New Zealand market as far as communication and uh, business challenges are concerned in general? Cool. Look, it's not a space that I play a lot in, and it's like digital and tech. Okay, I mean, there is there's digital marketing agencies. I'll, I'll tell I'll tell a COVID story, right? So during COVID, well, 2021 for us, for pretty much that entire year, and maybe a bit of 2022, the government said, well, we'll, we'll help out, right? We'll, we'll you know, give you some money. And there was, opportunity, there, was, there was ways for businesses to grow by you know, a 50% or even sometimes fully sponsored uh, businesses that yeah. were helping small, uh, small to medium enterprises get on the web, build a, build a funnel, run some ads or what have you, but it was largely the stories were around websites. And the, the frustrating thing is there were so many complaints from people who got nothing. Sorry, sweet, fuck all. And it really pisses the people off who want to do the right thing, the ethical market. So I put myself down as an ethical market. It's, it's just a shame because there are so many, you know, fly-by-night cowboy digital marketing people say, like, yeah, we can build your website. They've got no concept of what a good website is. You know, they're no concept of good SEO or, so this for me, that's a digital called yeah. digital tech space uh, because that's where New Zealand, most New Zealanders are. It's like uh, um, I was featured on Digital Boost and, and I heard that something like 75% of New Zealand small businesses don't even have a website. Well, 75, and we've got a population of 5 million. So, you know, it's a smaller scale number, but Still. it's just, what are they doing? Now, website, you don't need to have a website if you've got a great personal brand, if you've got a strategy to reach your customers, uh, even through content or, 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 or what have you, or, or, or paid. You don't need to, but, you know, the logical thing is to have a site or a place, you put one pager that says, I'm really good at this. Click this button and I'll shoot you my top 10 list, you know, some basic lead top magnet 10. that's going to draw into a sequence. You don't need much. But yeah, so, so to, to answer your question around the, what the New Zealand tech space is like, it's, it's kind of, we need some experts from overseas to come in and help, help some smaller businesses. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of, agencies for the bigger businesses there's medium-sized businesses to support those medium sized but for the smalls uh there's some unfortunately there's still some cowboys out there who create websites that just don't convert basically they're dog shit they're dog shit you know i mean it's it could be a simple wix website uh, nothing wrong with yeah okay let's not go there um, <laughs> you know, I, I think my first website was on Wix, and then I went, I went, this is shit. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm trying to do things out. This New Zealand is great. The DIY, the, we call it the number eight wire, right? The need to do things ourselves. Yeah. And I think it's, it's not just, just New Zealanders. People around the world go, well, why do I need to pay someone else to do something when I can learn to do it myself? Yeah. But there's some things in business you learn very quickly. It's like, I'm not going to, I can't write, I, I, I can't design, I don't know about code, I need someone to help me in this space right? to make the wheels go faster. And unfortunately, websites are, maybe we've gone through the curve where some businesses, um, are, you know, they've learned how to create websites. But yeah, I think it's, Obviously, seeing knowing what you guys do, there's great opportunity in New Zealand, right? Right. And and do you think uh, like the whole t 
digital boost initiative, government giving money out to people to go digital and these cowboys coming in, they just, just swept right in with the right price point just to just to get them in and and not actually deliver value. So that's that's well, really what well, this we we, we 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 both know that there's no value in free. Yeah. Right? It's no value in free. Absolutely. So you know it's it, it, you, you the government say well, here's a pot of money go go spend the money and everyone just went well get the money <laughs> and then no one really got what they wanted true so you you know that the, the, there's ha, how do i explain it? that how, how do you change that but, but at the same time it's is it expert overseas people who do an element of you know co coaching but there's only some things on the website you have to dealt it has to be done done for you yeah but in, in other tech new zealand's a great place to start a business and i was having a conversation with someone in in in, in india it's like it's quite a convoluted process to start a company and do that kind of stuff new zealand it's like you can start a business in 10 minutes True. there's no red tape you just start a business and people have crazy wacky ideas and they're probably going to fail and that's okay but new zealand is a great breeding ground for great you know uh, startups who are doing great things on a on a global stage. I just don't know who they are, right? I just don't play in that space. Yes. Yeah, makes sense. So, Hemanshu, you have been in New Zealand for like four or five years, yeah. I think. And I think you would be also the person who will tell us about the cross-cultural aspects of businesses in New Zealand, specifically in tech businesses as well, right? Yeah, so I mean... Um... So you want to know, you basically want to know what, what sort of cross-cultural opportunities get there. So, so, so my take on that is really um, that, so I've, I've spent what, six, five, six years in New Zealand. I've, I've worked with digital agencies. Um, I was heading a digital agency for quite a bit, doing projects for the, for the larger sites that, um, uh, that, that's not been the topic of conversation today, but doing those bigger 80 grand, 90 grand kind of projects. Uh, but still, what I realized is the New Zealand market is sort of using tech, uh, which is kind of old school at this stage. Um, uh, countries like US, India are not using it anymore. Um, and and small businesses don't know that. Uh, if, the small, if, if a SME uh, is going to an agency to get a website done, get their digital marketing activities in place, uh, they don't know what they're being sold, right? No. And and that's that's the that ends up being the real problem because um, what actually happens is they they just believe what the other person is saying and they're like okay cool yeah we we need a website and we need what you're telling us but they they're not really thinking about any experience for the user because they're like oh th this is a small business and they're gonna pay us what two three four grand and and we'll just give them something on the web but that's not not what they need if 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 you're building a website it needs to have a certain amount of user experience that it tells their potential customers a story which can then convert for them in in a lead and that's that's the whole point so uh, to to answer your question on the cross-cultural uh, uh, side of things is i think new zealand's in in the need of having um sort of companies coming on board from the international market let it be us india or uh, uk anywhere uh, and and really try and serve those small businesses and serve them what's happening out in the world and serve them the real digital experience that they could actually be giving to their users, um, which, which sort of is kind of missing out at the moment. Um, and look, I think, I think the win for India-based businesses is purely on the currency, right? The conversion, true, right? True. So, you know, if you're watching this podcast or listening to it it's, and you are looking for clients, look at New Zealand. But I would, I would say to you is go niche, right? Yeah, the the challenge that I have is you know people say oh I am a digital marketer. We do websites and lead ads and Google ads and content and social media and 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 and. Well, that's that, just that they, too for all industries. So, and we if anybody who wants to get their business online, yeah, you are not an expert. Yeah. So th there is I I would say you know there are SEO agencies there are creative creative media agencies, but most of them are digital, mate. We do it all. And therefore, you know, they might outsource 80% of the business, they might do the SEO, they might 80% or they might do, you know, the, do, do the content. It's a way to get people in. 
because people don't know. It's exactly yep. what you said. They they just don't get it. It's so like I said with the digital booth, well, it's seventy five percent don't have a website. So if the, looking if you're a if you're a genuine SME, SME small business looking to grow your business and get it online, they don't know what they don't know. True. So, but then again, unfortunately, for you to educate them, it's going to take a lot, right? Because it it's it's almost like I think there's an opportunity. Maybe there's a there's an opportunity here, gentlemen, to start a business. Customer journey, right? Cu- customer journey experience around. You know, well, what what is the journey that they're going to go on through to working with you, through to the back end in terms? Yeah, of they're going to repeat more business for you. Um, people people in New Zealand just don't think about that. They go, oh, I'm going to make you know umbrellas out of my local oak tree, and I'm going to sell them. You know, oh, this is a big idea. I'm going to build a website. No, no, go and test the idea first, right? Sure. But yeah, we're not talking about the the stupid ideas. Yeah. Yeah, no, makes makes total sense, uh, and and a good point actually. You know, we should we should take a note that a customer journey, uh, building customer journeys, uh, that that should be a service of its own, um, because that sort of sits outside of building and designing a website and things like that, um, and sort of even sits a, it sits under the umbrella of user experience, but but yeah. it's it's its own um, thing, uh, sure. But yeah, I mean, we're sort of brewing some great conversations, and I've got I've got. Uh, an interesting one here. What 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 are your thoughts? And I'll I'll sort of come to you as well. But what are your thoughts on the evolving role of digital? Because I I feel it's still evolving in in New Zealand. Uh, what what would be the evolving role of digital solutions for mainly for small businesses? Look, you learned some new phrases as we were driving to here uh, here today, right? Can you remember what they were? Which oh yeah. Uh, uh, under the line, through the line, over the line. So um, below the line, oh, through below the, line, the line, through the and line, above the line, above the line, above the line. Do you know what those are, Ritesh? So yeah. in a and this is this is like this is what you've just asked me as a question is what so many people are like. Well, I don't know that I don't know, right? Yeah. So that's a, those are terms used in advertising for larger businesses. Below the line is PR, social media content, uh, activation, uh, even direct mail. Right, marketing channels to communicate with customers. Uh, through the line is digital. Called it through the line. Originally, there was only above the line and below the line. And above the line is your mainstream, right? So TV, radio, press, outdoor, uh, mags, maybe. So to answer your question is, there's a lot of people who just don't get and even understand what digital is. I mean, I yeah. kind of said to you before, well, how would you define tech? It's like, and then you kind of scroll and say, that's digital. So what is digital? What what what? How did you define the concept of digital to help your business grow? That's that, that's a question. And and I, I thought it was a no. It was maybe <laughs> it was a rhetorical question. No no no. I I know it, it's not a rhetorical. No. So so so, so but yeah. I, it's uh the 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 people that I'm talking to, they understand what digital is, but they don't see the the where it can take them. Now, you know, you guys love talking about tech and trends and how you can make things go faster. This is the AI podcast, yeah. for goodness sake. And, you know, there are, as soon as AI landed, what, 12, 14, 18 months ago, maybe you know, in that time, there's the plethora of training people. We can show you how to use AI and, you know, it's just asking a question and a prompt and, you know, to get what you want. Uh, but it's... There's so much more than that. You know, I, I was saying about the, the work that I'm doing with Samsung, their latest model, am I not to mention it? Yes, it was, it's it, it was embargoed until this <laughs> morning. And their S24 Ultra phone was released wo- wo- worldwide. And it's, it's got an AI function, so you can talk in another language. Would have been really good to communicate yeah. with, the, with the rickshaw drivers. <laughs> but, you know, and it's going to spit out in Hindi. Yeah. And it's just, you know, but it's just easy. So big businesses are embracing it, but, you know, that's that's one element of tech that we're now aware of because we've been educated and the news media have been, you know, there's articles and stories that everyone's going to read and go, oh, that's AI. But I'm going to throw it back to you to give me your two pieces of tech that consumers will be using in the next two years that we don't know about. 
Cool. So, I, I, I don't want to give that away so easily. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, okay. So, the whole whole space of AI, and I, I jumped right on the wagon as well. I built an AI app just to, you know, have fun, see what happens, um, how the whole thing works and all of that. Uh, so, the whole space of AI is really, really uh, going to, not even going to, it kind of already has uh, changed the space, especially for small and medium-sized uh, business owners. So in the next, not even the next two years, but this this year that we are in, the 2024, uh, people have got to just really start using AI to its real potential and not just to write emails and not just to say, hey, give me the recipe for this or or restructure this piece of text here. Not that. You can, if if you are, and it, you know, after the whole AI thing has come out, there, there are jobs that have come out as prompt engineers. But you don't, you, you're good. You, you do need them in a way, but you yourselves can sort of start understanding how to prompt uh, an, uh, a large language model and get it to give you information that you want, that you used to pay somebody for in the past. That's going to be the real superpower for these small and medium-sized uh, business owners, right? Uh, and that's going Except to be when they think, oh, I can use AI for my blog posts. I can use yeah. AI for, the, for my content on my website. No. No, no, no. So I was, because I was totally Google that. will, yeah. or, or any other Bing, if you want to use yeah. it, is there's like they're going to see that this is content taken from an AI generator. Yeah, and also, and also, you know, so you, you, with this conversation, it also comes that a lot of people say, are saying, is is AI going to just replace a content writer's job and things? Like that? No, no. The the content writer or the designers, or these guys are the curators. It, they can be getting their ideas from 10 different places. They might have read something somewhere, which AI is also now reading and just giving it to you. But they read it somewhere, they did something, but they are the curators. So so you can never take that away. So no. so you, you you don't want to uh, misinform the, the SMEs as well that that it is going to replace uh, people who write blogs for you or, or people who create designs for you and things like that. But it still is a powerful tool for you, even for your day-to-day production like you can see that you're quite passionate around this uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I was just speaking it no I'm <laughs> uh, I, I am actually about this whole uh, whole uh, topic around artificial intelligence I am uh, quite passionate about it um, and I'm just letting it all out here good let it all out that's fine just you know but it's you know if we think about the movies that we've watched and we're emotionally connected to those and we think of our robot or we think of those you know older <laughs> movies that you know, this, this life form becomes a, 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 a thing that is living and then you end up wearing Terminator and we're all going to blow up. So, yeah. You know. But yeah, it, it, there is so much possibility and I think just coming back to a, to a New Zealand perspective, I can't really speak, I've been out of the Australian market for, uh, for, for 10 years, but uh, for, for, for New Zealand, unfortunately, people are thinking, oh, well, I don't need to hire a copywriter or a, or web content, or blog writers, etc. But it gives you a great structure, right? Even if you are framing something that, you know, it's the structural yeah. pathway, but your hook and your and your story needs to come from you, you know. And that's why I'm so glad to not be playing in that space, because I can't, you know, for you to tell a story, your your story, uh, for your website. It's got to rank because the keywords are, are your own, right? Yeah, totally, totally. In fact, you asked uh, like two things. One was, of course, the AI. And I feel that second thing that might blow up in the next couple of years is going to be MarkTech. Uh, specifically, it's kind of, you know, integration of marketing and technology. The way marketing is going to happen in the next couple of years is going to be mind-blowing. Now that everyone is getting into the tech bandwagon using AI and ML and these videos being generated and all this CGI that you can see everyone using all these cosmetic companies using MarkTech is going to be very 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 big space and I think now that people are also started understanding technology and using the technology at its best now the marketing agency has also got the grasp of it you know that okay fine people are gonna use the technologies let's build the marketing around tech there are a lot of things that are happening that that even even we were yeah, discussing exactly 
uh, things around CGI, things around AR. Uh, you know, you put up a you put up a goggle and you just uh, see uh, maybe your home being built in front of you using AI tech. There are a lot of options around. Uh, uh, you know, even VR tech is getting very strong. There are personalized AI model used in marketing itself, and we have seen in India. Uh, you can see an ad with your face in that ad of a cookie, with a very very famous, uh, you know, a very famous Bollywood star. There is also one new uh, mark tech thing that happened recently, which was uh, it was regarding regarding Cadbury. So when you get the Cadbury, the box of Cadbury. There is a QR code on it. You scan it. It takes you to a page wherein you can enter your name. You know, maybe John. I'll enter. Then it creates a song for your birthday, which has it's crafted for you. It's so, so you know that largely is what we would integrate into advertising uh, experiential marketing campaigns, yes. right? So it's it's like there's a box in the middle of a square. Right, mm -hmm. it could be in Germany, and people go and unpack the box. They pull out this thing, and they scan the code, and they get this experience, and and that's all filmed to use for amplification through through PR. But it's 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 as simple as that, right? It's like how do you, su su I call it surprise and delight, right? Create that emotional connection, um, an organoleptic, multi sensory experience. True, and I still love that space, but I. It's too. It's cost. It's cost prohibitive for smaller smaller brands. Yes, they don't have a budget for media spend and PR. Most small SMEs don't even understand what PR is. Yeah, and so yeah, it's it, maybe I've got to shift my thinking and being a little bit more larger businesses because, you know, when you've got even you know people would ring us up at their marketing agency and say we've got a budget of ten thousand uh, dollars. What what can you do for us? And we say go away. Because we're going to take five thousand of it, and you're going to spend it at the pub, you know. So you, I know five thousand dollars, Sweden bugger all. So yeah, there, there's uh, there's lots of opportunities to you like you said, Mar Martech, yeah, of, of integration of those two. And look, it's exciting. If you don't like change, well, you hard out of luck, right? Yeah. So, but so the thing is, so the activations and and the and the the physical ideas that you're talking about that is given that that was all about the experience, right? And now what's happened is people are expecting that experience digitally, but you're right that uh, it, it becomes harder for uh, the small and the medium sized companies to afford to build an experience like that. Yeah. But also, along with a lot of these AI tools coming out, making it a lot more easier. Not not replace, but at least make it easier to develop stuff. Um, at least in the coming year, it's going to be a lot more affordable, and and that that has been our point for quite a bit. That with this new tech, we really want to use it to enhance people who previously could not afford it now be, be able to afford it to build experiences like that for their customers and give them that engagement because all the use the new generation they want they want the engagement they want to interact with something they just they, they don't they want to say they don't want to look at a landing page and like yeah, click a button they want to actually get an experience right but again these experiences were only affordable for bigger brands in the past but now it's coming that with the new tech we want to be make it available for the SMEs as well yep um so that's and again i think coming back to the whole point about what's going to be uh, the blowing up this is probably going to be uh, a point that blows up in the next couple of years as well, but being able to serve these experiences for SMEs. Um, so I think that's going to be a big one. Yeah. You just, just, I can see your passion, gentlemen, you know, for, for this space. It's so awesome. It's not, uh, you know, normally when you come on a podcast, I'm doing most of the talking, you know, like going, oh, you don't need me, need me, I'm going. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, kind of where I come in is, uh, it's a great thing to have the tech, but you still need to have the creative yeah. and the storytelling True. to take them on a journey. You know, and I exactly. think there's this an agency in New Zealand. He's a friend of mine, and you know, he. I know you don't have TikTok here, but that's kind of one of his large pieces. Is how do you build content that is, you know, that takes people on a journey that frames your, you know, hero's journey, just like any other film is done, and you're still using. The, a digital platform, yeah, but it's about then thinking: How do we integrate 
either Instagram reels within your link tree, or so you can press a button, you go to this other experiences, a CGI experience, that most people are just not there yet, right? So I, I think it's, you know, AI as a tool is it can be explored. But what's that next thing that's going to really move the needle and make it easier for uh, that experience-driven economy um, or even, what do they call it, um, a, a attention economy, right? Yeah. Because that's really what it is. Then suddenly everyone's got these little experiences. You can just see it's almost ready for, you know, did that, that film Ready Player One? You know that one? Where you should watch That's great. I I've watched it. it. Well, you should. It's, it's just like this guy's created this uh, an ulterior world where you're, you know, what do you call it? Not emoji, you're... Um, your animated animated person of yourself, right. they play and they interact and they just okay. things. They get to go to worlds and shoot things up, and it's like, uh, which is kind of, it's just kind of that next level, right? right. So it's like taking things off New Zealand, off off the world, and creating them digitally. And it, suddenly, then you all of those old traditional brands who were used to advertising of outdoor and TV and radio and press now going, we can go and advertise the in the in the virtual world. You're right. True. And people are living in these different worlds. Are they already different living in different worlds? But they are. Well, I think I think we've had so we, we started from your journey all the way to talking about what's gonna blow up in the in the next two years. I think we've had a really nice conversation. I, I feel very good about this episode. What 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 are your thoughts? Yeah, even I, I feel really good about it. Uh, I feel that, you know, it it's coming from a third person perspective. Specifically, a person who is quite outside the cultural, uh, you know, bubble that we have, and even it feels really great to have that perspective, so that it opens up our minds as well. Well, thank you very much for having me, and uh, we'll return the favor and have you on my podcast. Amazing! Uh, our reach in New Zealand is not quite like the reach that you have in Mumbai, but uh, you still need to promote your channel, right? Yep. You still got to digitize. You got to. Talk about it and, and 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 do that thing, and those things don't really change. You know, you either do it through paid or you do it through organic, and uh, there's nothing wrong in you know doing it one person at a time. And that's kind of my thing is I'm going to tell you my story, and I'd love to you know have have your story be told because that's how you're going to connect with the next person. And perfect, that's my will. But thank you very much for having me. And we're, and we're looking forward to coming to your podcast. Sweet. Cool. Amazing. <laughs>